Hello, welcome back to another Ask Lattice, and this time it's part two on the finger injuries. And we've got James Walker back again. Well, actually he's still here because we've been chatting earlier today on the sofa, and we're gonna still be running through a load of finger injury stuff. But this time, in this video, we're gonna be going into a little bit more of the unusual cases, or the things which aren't quite as common, but we're still seeing, and well, both myself and James, we're seeing whether we're a coach or a physio in climbers' hands and fingers. First thing to just say first off is that if you're interested in the anatomy element and exactly what's going on in the fingers and hands, James did a full breakdown and detailing of that in the last video. So if you wanna know what's going on inside the hand, then have a look at that other video before we start. But otherwise, let's jump straight into our four kind of main uh, injuries that we're going to talk about and we're going to deal with first off is the collateral injury which we know can often happen in things like pocket climbing and yeah. uh, finger jam uh, sort of crap climbing yeah that's right so last in the last video we spoke about uh poly injuries and then about um sort of joint irritation or synovitis of the joint and they're for sure the most common things that I will see in the, in the clinic. Um, but now we're going to talk a little bit more about um, some more, I guess, unusual ones and um, yeah, the, the collateral ligament is the first one of those. Um, so yeah, uh, basically either side of the joints in the finger you have um, a ligament called a collateral ligament and basically what the idea of that is or what its function is is to stop these um, lateral movements you know that you can extend and flex the joint but there's not really any movement uh, sideways in in that joint so what we can see um, is that uh, climbers can injure these and often they're injured acutely so in terms of uh, in the same way as a pulley tear or rupture something happens um, and it kind of think, oh, what was that? I was sore. And it's identified by pain, tends to be just on one side of the actual um, joint. Um, and as you were saying, the most common way to injure it is um, when you're doing a move, which is maybe in a pocket or, or, or a two finger um, move where you're kind of turning or twisting or, or, or crack climbing as well. And, and what can literally happen is that the, the joint can be twisted like so, and then it can just injure that, um, that collateral ligament. We've, and they're the same sort of, essentially the same sort of um, physical structure in a way to an annular pulley, aren't they? But they're on the side of the knuckle. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much the same. They're a connective tissue. They're, they're made out of the same material, I suppose. Um, they're just less commonly injured because uh, the um, mechanics of climbing tend to put more stress through the pulleys in this sort of way, mm -hmm. rather than pockets and twisting and, and crap climbing and, and things, things like that. that. Unless you're a crap climber like me, because I've loads of these injuries. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. Um, so in terms of um, yeah, what people will get is they will get pain on, on the sides here. Um, and yeah, sometimes what happens is that you actually get a swelling just on that sort of one side of the finger. It can be quite uh, recognisable here. So in terms of um, a quick little bit of, of what people would do for those, it's, it's, it's definitely an easier problem to treat than... Um, than a, than a pulley. Uh, we very, very rarely see like ruptures of this ligament. Um, uh, uh, one way to kind of see whether it, it is an injury in yourself is, well, first of all, if you can palpate or poke around the side and it's quite sore just here, um, that can be a little bit sometimes mistaken for a irritation of the joint capsule, like we said, talked about in the last video. But a nice way to actually test for it is if you have your own finger like this and slightly flex the joint, and if you push uh, the, the top of the finger, kind of towards you whilst you fix uh, this uh, finger here, then if that's painful here, or sometimes what you get is what we call like a gapping of the joint, then that can be a, a sign of a collateral ligament injury. Um, in terms of what we recommend that people do to try and uh, help that is we often get them um, depending on how severe it is, it, it maybe need some time off climbing, maybe they uh, 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 don't. Um, but in terms of one thing that's really useful for it is, is like buddy taping. And the reason for that is because, say for example, you do some buddy taping. What buddy taping is, is you tape it to the next finger, um, just kind of a loop around here and a loop around there. And it just means that you then can't have that individual finger kind of rotating uh, away on itself and getting re-injured. Is it important which, uh, so let's say I did the collateral in my middle finger, is it important whether I body tape to my index or to my ring? 
Yeah, so if it was uh, this side, what we, is what we call the ulna side, we call this the ulna side and the radial side, it relates to just the, the bones in the arm, that's how we describe it. So if it was this one, you would tape it to this finger, and if it was this side, you would tape it to, to that finger. Um, yeah, they're not too bad. They don't tend to be too bad in terms of uh, injuries, and they're not as common, um, but they still definitely need to be looked after. One thing that I found um, with my uh, classical injuries that I've had a lot of over the years is that I've actually been able to uh, maintain doing a lot of half crimp climbing mm -hmm. whilst I have actually quite a, a bad collateral injury yeah um, and but I'm not very good at doing open hand drag climbing yeah that seems to really aggravate it but as soon as yeah. I go to a most more closed position I can happily operate almost at maximum which seems almost weird to do because you're thinking well I've got a finger injury but yeah. I can actually do another form of grip position really quite well most people think you got a finger injury crimping half crimping will cause it problems but it depends on what the injury is so the reason that that is the case for you is because the collateral uh, ligament attaches above and below the joint so when you've got it more into a drag position it's actually stressing the 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 um, fibers more whereas when you flex the joint it kind of takes it off tension um, so um, yeah that's why you can do it into a half crimp and it's tricky with climbers because um, like you say your first thought is how do I keep climbing with this injury and and but to be honest the, the collateral ligament is one where you can sort of keep climbing and, and with my clients we tend to have this kind of meet in the middle type things so obviously I want them to get better and in the long term and they want to do their projects and you know sometimes the weather's coming in and whatever so we can say right here's here's what you can do but those are ones that you can sort of get around a little bit but it all depends on the severity really and what your aims are and and, and things like like that but like you were saying if you are uh, taping it together and and going into a half crimp position sometimes that's a, a way to uh, get around it a little bit um, or when you're excuse me when you're returning to climbing um, that's a way to sort of do it whereas a pulley injury would be opposite, wouldn't it? It's open hand to start with and things like that. Okay. Uh, so next one is tenosynovitis. Tenosynovitis. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is, what's, what's going on here, how does it happen? Yes, so uh, a tenosynovitis, it um, sounds a bit of a complicated name, but basically, um, as we explained in the anatomy section on the last video, the flexor tendons have a, a sheath around them. Um, so for example, we describe the joint injury as a synovitis, which is a, um, like an irritational inflammation of the uh, uh, synovial joint capsule. So that's where the wording comes from. Whereas a tenosynovitis is a, uh, an irritation of the, the surrounding of the tendon, like the teno section of it. So basically what happens with that is you get an inflammation and irritation uh, in between the um, the, the tendon sheath and the actual tendon itself. Now, the issue with this one is it can very commonly feel like it's an A2 pulley injury or strain because most of the time we tend to get the pain around uh, this sort of area. Um, as I say, at the clinic, I, I, I do ultrasound scans on the fingers and it's a very big difference because the pulley actually tends to be fine and tends to be intact. However, you get this kind of uh, sort of halo all the way around of swelling and it goes a little bit further up and down than the actual A2. So quite commonly people will actually find with a tenosynovitis that the, the more of the actual finger is sore. And unlike a pulley, it doesn't tend to come on acutely as in an injury. It can come on acutely after a really hard session, um, but not like an injury, do you know what I mean? Not like they've done something and they've jumped down and, and, or they lower down and kind of think, oh, what, what happened then? It tends to be more of a, oh, that feels sore afterwards, or it can come on gradually. And with a tenosynovitis, there is an inflammatory, it's an inflammatory driven problem. Um, so what tends to happen in terms of recognising that is that it tends to be that, uh, for example, when people first get up in the morning, um, it feels sore, maybe a bit more swollen. It feels sore to actually move the hand in the first place. Um, and they tend to actually get more of an actual swelling itself. We talked in the last video about pulley injuries and um, sometimes with a pulley injury, even a rupture, you don't get much swelling. Whereas with a tenosynovitis, you come in and look at the person's finger and the whole finger is, is tends to be a little bit fatter and a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, and yeah, with, with those ones, actually the main way that we uh, need to 
uh, settle it is to actually try and get rid of the inflammation. So the, again, depending on severity, it's very difficult to, to generalize about it, but these are some of the only ones that we often do recommend that, that people maybe uh, speak, uh, speak, to their, speak to their doctor and get a course of like anti-inflammatories for it because it is literally an inflammatory driven uh, process. Um, sometimes again, depending on the severity, we uh, maybe immobilize them for a little while in, the, in an extension splint because basically it's the gliding of the tendon through the sheath that's irritating uh, irritating it and, and, and we can um, do that. So yeah, atenosynovitis is commonly one that's self-misdiagnosed by climbers. They think it's an A2 pulley uh, injury, um, but those sort of tips I just gave then is a way to sort of recognize it. Um, uh, so, so yeah, we tend to do anti-inflammatory stuff uh, in certain cases, but most of the time it's kind of um, lots and lots of uh, um, ice kind of therapy and, and, and working on that and some massage as well to kind of like really um, help encourage that inflammation to, to settle down. Okay, so but, but like structurally, mechanically, nothing's broken, torn, you know, needs fixing in this case. No, no, it's a, it's an irritation and inflammation within the tendon sheath. So it's uh, no, you don't tend to see any actual tears or damage to the tissue as such. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Next one is the flexor tendon strain. And I personally have come across this a number of times with climbers over the years. Uh, and it's quite distinct from the other injuries we, we've talked about here, isn't it? Yeah, this one tends to be a bit more of a, almost a, um, I guess more simple, really. It, it tends to be just a, a strain of the tissue from almost, uh, I always describe it to people, imagine you've got like a, a, a rope that's anchored down and you've just really pulled it quite, quite hard. Um, I saw one of these recently actually, and how did it happen? So on a three finger, three finger drag and foot slip and just loaded the ring finger just kind of in this position and kind of you hear and then that just gets loaded mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the way to recognize that is commonly people say they got the pain into the hand and then it felt like it went all the way down into their forearm yeah. and then afterwards they feel um, that they tend to get a tightness into the forearm that develops um, and then they tend to get just a generalized soreness into the actual the finger and the actual length of the hand but again with this one there's no sort of um damage as such we we tend to not see anything on a on a scan for example it looks reasonably normal really there's not any inflammation there's um not any kind of uh ruptures of anything or or, or damage of, of the tissue or anything like that in terms of something that you can see however um it tends to just be more of an actual strain of the of the tissue and sometimes even the muscle can excuse me, even the muscle can um, become a little bit affected and a little bit tight as well. Um, with those, they often just need time. Um, people can often climb through it, um, depending on, again, how severe it is. Um, and, and like you were saying, sometimes even with those ones, open hand drag stuff tends to be more painful than actual uh, half crimp. Um, am, I, am I right in saying that it's almost like a case of in whatever position that you injured, that they've got that strain in the first place, that's likely the one that you need to avoid within your climbing. So let's say you did it on a mono, for example, in the middle finger. So mono is a good example. Specifically, because yeah. I've done this myself on, on monos for training for them, um, is then avoid that mono training. Because I could quite happily, when I strained uh, my right hand, mm -hmm. middle finger, I could go to three finger drag training exactly. and it didn't hurt in the slightest exactly. way. As soon as I came back to monos, yeah. Oh, it really hurt in the forearm. It comes down the arm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, what we're, if you think about what we're trying to say, with a um, with a pulley injury, you avoid half crimp or crimping to start with. You tape the finger to stop you being able to crimp or, or uh, yeah, mostly to be able to crimp. With a collateral injury, you you body tape it to stop you from twisting that. It's exactly what you're saying. You avoid the things that irritate it and aggravate it. So yeah, most of the time with this uh, flexor tendon strain, when we test people in the clinic, we get them into this position and we say, right, pull against me. And that causes the pain to come down their arm. But even with two fingers, they're like, oh, it's not painful at all. So that is, is yeah, we tend to know that that's the case. And like you were saying, if Taping comes into that one as well. So sometimes actually body taping can be useful for that, but most of the time it's just people understanding the problem and understanding that you've got a single uh, finger kind of, um, uh, th that's what causes the issue, loading and single finger. If they don't do that and avoid it, they tend to be okay. But the problem with that is if people get back to climbing too quickly, 
it's not controllable always climbing. So it's like, well, if your foot slips again, or if you're not sure what the, the route is like, or you don't know what hold you're going to. So then it's when you just have to be sensible and kind of, so with these ones, it's more a case of allowing it to heal. Often we recommend a lot of soft tissue self massage into the forearm because the actual muscle can kind of contract and tighten up itself. Uh, um, and then just actually giving it some time. So mostly within maybe a month, those ones tend to settle down on average. Obviously some are quicker and, and slower, but like you were saying, avoiding the monos and those kind of um, things that, that load the finger up on, on its own uh, tend to be a good way to um, help those. Yeah. Last one. Um, and this, uh, I think is interesting because it's a, 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 an injury and also a phrase that I think the climbing community has generally become a lot more aware of in the last, I'd say three years or so. And I didn't hear being sp spoken about very much at all five years ago or so. And that is the lumbrical strain. What is a lumbrical strain? What's going on? What are we looking at? Um, okay, so I'll quickly um, quickly just explain the anatomy again because it's a bit more of a complicated one. So, so the difference between these other tissues, everything we've spoken about so far in terms of the uh, the pulley, the collateral uh, ligament, the tendon sheath, they're all connective tissues, so they're not muscles. Um, whereas the lumbrical is actually a muscle, um, and that's within the actual um, hand itself. Uh, so the interesting thing about the uh, lumbrical is it doesn't have a bony attachment; it attaches onto the flexor tendon. Um, onto the what we call the palmar side of the hand and then it comes and then attaches onto what we call the digital dorsal expansion which is a, um, an area of connective tissue that, that then feeds into the extensor tendon um, and what its job is and it's very very clever really it allows you to do these kind of like pinching actions so it allows you to flex at the this joint here the metacarpal phalangeal joint whilst extending at the um, proximal interphalangeal joint. So it does this kind of pinching action, which uh, is obviously very useful in climbing. Um, good for hand jamming as well. Good for hand jamming, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so, so, but interestingly enough, very, very rarely in this position does uh, it get injured mm. because, um, yeah, how it, how it gets injured is often um, on uh, two finger um, pockets, which is hard for you to get, it's hard for me to get my hand into the position um, without actually pulling down in a pocket, but we'll, we'll try my best. So the, basically what happens is say, for example, you are in a two finger pocket or a mono or, or, or something like that, and, and you're here and you're pulling down, what people do is they want to get the most amount of force generated when they're climbing. The reason people crimp, you think, well, what, why bother doing it? Because it's more kind of injury prone positions because it's more, gives you more power, doesn't it? The idea is to get to the top of your route and, and the crimp and putting the thumb over is the most kind of powerful uh, position. So, so when you're actually here and you're in a two finger pocket, what people do is they tuck their fingers in mm -hmm. because it gives uh, that sort of opposition and it gives the most sort of power to those uh, muscles. Now, the problem with this is when you tuck the finger in, the lumbrical, say for example, which goes in between uh, the fourth and uh, fifth finger, it's getting um, sort of sheared or pulled from two different positions, one's pulling up, one's pulling down. So what actually tends to happen is you get a, an injury or sometimes a tear of the muscle because you get this kind of shearing kind of force here. If you're in a four finger open hand, you're never really gonna get a lumbrical injury. It's, it's almost impossible. Um, so it comes from those tucking of those fingers uh, in. And then people will feel the pain within the hand. So quite commonly people come in here and this is where they get um, uh, the pain. The good, the good news about lumbrical injuries is they're a lot quicker to get better. And the reason for that is because they're a muscle. So they have a blood supply. So blood is great at healing things. And the reason that finger injuries and in climbers are so problematic. And I think you said before you had a pull injury that maybe lasted like nine months altogether. You know, that's maybe because it's a little bit mismanaged, but it'd be super unusual to get like a hamstring tear and it to last nine months this doesn't happen and that's mostly because it has a blood supply so it just heals a lot quicker so with lumbrical injuries they're much people don't know much about them and and they um they're they're i don't know they're less common we are seeing quite a few of them actually um but there's a few really nice tips to kind of um uh, make sure you you improve that and do it in the right way so again similar to the collateral uh injury buddy taping is absolutely key with this one and the reason being is because if you buddy tape even if you forget yourself and try and get into that mono or two finger pocket kind of position you can't do it so you can't get that shearing force on those um 
on on the muscle um and yeah so, so, so that's the best way in terms of um when you're rehabbing it and then when you're getting back into that because at the end of the day if you injure yourself on a project you probably will want to go back to that project so what can actually happen is you can try and train yourself to not tuck these fingers in quite so much so if you're climbing and you're on a two finger pocket you can maybe be a bit more relaxed in the fingers and open them up and it's just a change in the same way that sometimes uh we see climbers who they full crimp on everything. Do you know what I mean? Like you watch someone climb and on any hold, they full crimp because they just feel comfortable in it. So with the kind of, um, when, when we advise them maybe not to necessarily do that all the time, we advise people to just change the way that they do two finger pockets or monos and just kind of have a bit more of an open hand position. Um, but yeah, the, the lumbar injury is um, uh, uh, one that kind of um, heals a little bit quicker because it's a, it's a muscular injury. Yeah, thank goodness, thank goodness there's some injuries that yes. actually heal up reasonably quickly. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, as you said, the fingers and hands can be, yeah, take a very, very long time. Absolutely. Um, so. Yeah, they're, they're a nuisance. Oh, well, joy, the joys of climbing, <laughs> isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. Um, so that's the, uh, the end of today's uh, video. We hope that you've enjoyed this and found it useful. Uh, we've actually filmed a number of videos with James. We've also got one on Golfer's Elbow and another on self-massage for climbers. So you can just find those on our channel um, and have a look at what James and I have to say and discuss about those. And otherwise we will see you again very soon.